In an interview 60 years ago, Nobel Prize winning philosopher Bertrand Russell, when asked what message he would give to a future generation about lessons learned in his lifetime, he responded with two points, one intellectual and one moral. Intellectually, when studying any matter or considering any philosophy, ask yourself only what are the facts and what are the facts that the truths bear out. Never let yourself be diverted by what you wish to believe or by what you think would have significant social effects if it were believed. Look only and solely at what are the facts. And morally, love is wise, hatred is foolish. In this world which is getting more and more closely interconnected, we have to learn to tolerate each other. We have to learn to put up with the fact that some people say things we don't like. We can only live together in that way. If we are to live together and not die together, we must learn a kind of charity, a kind of tolerance, which is absolutely vital to the continuation of human life on this planet. Taking a moment to think about these wise words, from an intellectual standpoint, considering the thorough academic rigour where tech is based on and built around scientific fact, and moral principles that aim to create the most inclusive system to improve the standard of living for everyone on a global scale, Cardano is a great example of a product of this advice. Welcome back for today's instalment of Cardano Insights, delivering a fast-paced bite-sized roundup of the all-important Cardano news and ecosystem content from the past 24 hours. So join me as I explore exactly what's been happening at the very pulse of Cardano. So let's get straight into it. So recently we touched on IOG's EVM sidechain alpha testnet release being made available for early access for selected participants. Well today IOHK gave us some more information on the sidechain they're deploying, laying out its features, benefits and delivery plans. We've spoken about interoperability often on this channel and specifically how important this is for decentralized ecosystems. IOG are quick to point out in this article that a global economy requires that users' tokens are not siloed into any single blockchain. Blockchains cannot succeed in isolation. No single blockchain will transform the entire digital infrastructure for better, nor will a single blockchain revolutionize the way we share data, transact, or engage with others virtually. Over time, there's a need for dedicated sidechains that enable a more diverse network of developers to join Cardano and the tools needed to support the development of applications for specific use cases. IOG plans to create a family of sidechains that will bring greater scalability, interoperability and programmability to Cardano. So I think we can all agree this is a pretty significant piece of the puzzle for Cardano to move towards a globally adopted system. The EVM sidechain will allow the Solidity developer community to build dApps on a lower fees and environmentally friendly platform that consumes far less energy than proof of work blockchains. In terms of its key features, the Cardano EVM sidechain will retain compatibility with Ethereum hard forks. Users will still have Ethereum developer tools creating a low barrier to entry and provide web-free wallet compatibility. The EVM sidechain will replace Ethereum's proof-of-work consensus algorithm with Ouroboros Byzantine Fault Tolerance OBFT, consensus protocol. OBFT is an implementation of Ouroboros that is able to tolerate Byzantine faults. OBFT offers good transaction processing at full network speed and instant transaction confirmations as well as proof of settlement. In terms of the roadmap to delivery, Cardano's EVM sidechain is being developed iteratively. As with any product launch, an iterative approach and performance assessments are necessary to ensure that everything works as intended. The initial testnet delivery will set the foundation for the EVM sidechain assessments and testing, followed by a passive and active sidechain launch, resulting in the main chain deployment. I've linked the full article in the description if you want to take a look at the full blog. This marks the first step towards Cardano becoming the most inclusive network. First Solidity then opened the doors to a whole range of programming languages. IOHK also released a short video demonstrating the EVM sidechain deploying Solidity smart contracts to the sidechain alpha testnet, so you can see it in action. Go give it a watch and I've also linked this in the description. Recently there's been a lot of discussion on civil control and consensus mechanisms, so I thought a quick breakdown of the family that is Ouroboros would be ideal to feature in this video. Proof of stake and proof of work are civil control mechanisms. In order to reach consensus, they need to be coupled with a consensus mechanism like Ouroboros for example. The civil mechanisms decide who can participate in validating the next block, and the consensus mechanism makes a decision on how to reach consensus. With that in mind, let's take a quick look at Ouroboros and some of its key features. Ouroboros is the consensus protocol for Cardano, the first provably secure proof of stake protocol and the first blockchain protocol based on peer reviewed research. Combining unique technology and mathematically verified mechanisms, Ouroboros guarantees and supports the security and sustainability of any blockchain implementing it. The result is a protocol with proven security guarantees and able to facilitate the propagation of global permissionless networks with minimal energy requirements. Cardano is the first of such networks. But in true Cardano style, Ouroboros comes in several versions or implementations. First, Ouroboros Classic. This was the first implementation and achieved three major milestones. 
the foundation for an energy efficient protocol to rival proof of work, the introduction of the mathematical framework to analyse proof of stake, and implementation of a novel incentive mechanism to reward participants in a proof of stake setting. What really set Ouroboros apart from other blockchain protocols was its ability to generate unbiased randomness in the protocol's leader selection algorithm and subsequent security assurances that provided. Randomness prevents the formation of patterns, which is critical for maintaining the protocol's security. Ouroboros was the first blockchain protocol to be developed with this type of rigorous security analysis. The second implementation was Ouroboros BFT. Ouroboros Byzantine Fault Tolerant BFT was used during the Byring update. This second instance of the protocol prepared Cardano for the decentralization that came with the Shelley release. Ouroboros BFT enabled synchronous communication between a network of federated servers, the blockchain, providing ledger consensus in a simpler and more deterministic manner. The third implementation was Ouroboros Preos. This introduced substantial security and scalability improvements to the Ouroboros Classic implementation. Preos processes transaction blocks by dividing chains into slots, which are aggregated into epochs. But unlike Ouroboros Classic, Preos is analyzed in a semi-synchronous setting and is secure against adaptive attackers. Next will come Ouroboros Genesis. Once implemented, this fourth iteration of Ouroboros will further improve upon Ouroboros Preos by adding a novel chain selection rule that enables parties to bootstrap from a Genesis block without the need for trusted checkpoints or assumptions about past availability. The Genesis paper also provides proof of the protocol's universal composability, which demonstrates that the protocol can be composed with other protocols in arbitrary configurations in a real-world setting without losing its security properties. Finally, we have Ouroboros Kronos. Kronos achieves two goals. First, it shows how blockchain protocols can synchronize clocks securely via a novel time synchronization mechanism and thereby become independent of external time services. Second, it provides a cryptographically secure source of time to other protocols. In short, Kronos makes the ledger more resistant to attacks that target time information. From an application point of view, Kronos can dramatically boost the resilience of critical telecommunications, transport and other IT infrastructures that require the synchronization of local time to a unified network clock that has no single point of failure. So that's a brief look at the Ouroboros family. Ouroboros represents the possibility of infinite and ethical growth and scalability of the blockchain. Its central message is the delivery of greater opportunities for the world and its preservation through much reduced energy consumption. A few days ago, I covered CityAM covering Charles and Cardano in their crypto magazine. Well, they seem to be a very Cardano-friendly publication. Yesterday, Duncan Coos, who is the principal technical architect at IOG, featured in a Q&A session in an article at CityAM Online. In the session, he talks about what he's most looking forward to in the coming months for Cardano, work on input endorsers, peer-to-peer -peer networking, and the Vassal upgrade, referencing big impacts on the Cardano community with all the technical developments that are in the pipeline. This is well worth a read, so I've linked it in the description below. It's great to see more Cardano exposure at City AM, and I think it's refreshing the way this publication reports on Cardano. Lots of focus on the tech, facts, and achievements of the blockchain, which is much needed in the crypto space. Now, if you're anything like me, then I'm sure ever since IOG announced their light wallet Lace, you've been eagerly anticipating updates on when it's going to be live and available. Although we don't yet have a definitive date, it would seem that we're getting closer, and yesterday, Lace.io gave us this sneak preview of the wallet in action. In this two minute demonstration video, it takes us through everything from download, navigating the interface, managing assets, the NFT gallery, stake delegation, and the DAP connector feature. As expected, the UI looks really slick and user friendly, but packed with all the features needed for a mainstream adopted wallet. As we all know, Lace is going to be far more than just a wallet and will serve as a tool that enables everyone to navigate into Web3 seamlessly, interacting with all aspects of the Cardano blockchain. If you haven't already, head over to lace.io and register your email now to keep up to date with all the latest developments in anticipation for the launch. I've linked everything in the description below. So that's it for another installment of Cardano Insights. I hope you enjoyed today's video and found value in the content. And if you did, please be sure to comment, like, share and subscribe. I really appreciate all the support from the Sapien community. It's certainly growing. So a big thank you to every one of the subscribers and those tuning in each weekday. We'll be back soon with your daily roundup. And until then, Thanks for watching, have a great day, and as always, keep it Cardano.